The moment your domain loses trust with inboxes, everything from sales alerts to renewal reminders get filtered, blocked, or lost in spam. I've seen this happen to scaling businesses who thought their email was fine until a month's worth of growth vanished. Here's the good news. It's not random. In this video, I'll show you the five overlooked mistakes that get business domains flagged, how to spot trouble before it lands in your dashboard, and most importantly, what to do to fix it. Hello, and welcome to MailTrap videos where we explore the world of emails. For the sake of this video, I've worked closely with deliverability specialists from MailTrap, people who have years of experience working with companies that send millions of emails a month. Everything you'll hear today comes straight from real life lessons and proven tactics used to solve deliverability problems before they escalate. Let's not sugarcoat it. When your domain gets flagged, the consequences are more dire than your marketing emails missing a few inboxes. We're talking about trust eroded with your most valuable customers, extra support costs from users chasing missing invites and password resets, upsell pipeline lost because product updates and offers go unseen, revenue missed when renewal or billing emails never arrive. By the time your dashboard is full of alerts, you're already behind. The best deliverability experts I know never wait for the crisis. They use these signs to spot trouble before their reporting tools even flinch. Internal test emails landing in spam. You or your team send yourselves a test campaign, and instead of being in primary, it's hiding in spam or promotions. Tiny, domain-specific engagement dips. Your overall open rate looks fine, but open rates at Gmail or Outlook accounts have dipped by 5-10%. to 10%. That's a sign you're slowly getting filtered. First, strange bounce messages. Here, I don't mean the usual mailbox full, but bounces that mention block lists, spam house, barracuda, etc. Or weird error codes like policy violation, message refused, or sender reputation too low. Spike in unsubscribes or complaints during a normal campaign. Not after a list purchase, not after a huge content change, just a sudden two times increase in complaints or unsubscribes during a regular campaign. That means ISPs or gateways are starting to treat your domain more cautiously. Unexplained delivery delays. Your transactional emails or drip sequences start showing unusual queued or retrying statuses in logs, especially with no infrastructure issues on your side. This is how ISPs throttle senders before an outright block. If you see even one of these, it's time to stop sending. Seriously, the first thing you should do is stop. Don't just finish today's campaign. Don't try one more blast to see what happens. Why? If you keep sending after your domain gets flagged, you only make the problem bigger. Providers notice, and it's a fast track to being seen as risky. That reputation hole gets deeper with every campaign, and fixing it always takes longer, and costs more than simply pausing to address the issue. Starting with authentication drift. It's what happens when your email authentication, SPF, DKIM, or DMARC, goes out of sync with your sending practices, often due to unnoticed DNS changes or new streams. Everything looks fine on your dashboard, but inbox providers can't prove your emails are legitimate, even as your dashboard still shows all green lights. You'll see your most important emails, onboarding links, payment receipts, even password resets, aren't arriving at all. Weeks of pipeline and revenue can disappear before you even know what hit you. How to protect your domain from authentication drift. Make sure your tech team keeps SPF and DMARC records clean. There should only ever be one per domain, never duplicates. Ask for regular health checks to ensure your authentication is up to date, especially after new tools or big campaigns launch. Whenever you roll out a new email stream, major template, or rebrand, confirm with your technical lead that your authentication, SPF, DKIM, DMARC, is still passing everywhere it should. Don't settle for monitor mode. 
Make sure DMARC is fully enforced for any domain sending high volume or business critical emails. Now, let's move on to the slowest, most common way domains get flagged. Poor list hygiene and low engagement. Keep emailing people who never engage or keep invalid addresses on your list and ISPs quickly flag all your mail as low priority, not just the promos. That means invoices, receipts and account alerts get blocked too. Sending to bad addresses is also one of the fastest ways to get your domain flagged as risky. Suddenly, you're paying to send messages no one sees, while your reputation and customer trust take the direct hit. Keep your list hygiene bulletproof. Assign clear ownership for list management. Make list cleaning someone's recurring responsibility, not an occasional to-do. Most ESPs handle basic bounces and unsubscribes automatically, but ask your team to review suppression reports and spot any patterns. Don't assume the system catches everything. Have your marketing or ops team regularly audit the list and remove contacts who haven't engaged in six plus months. If no one's checking, you're leaving money and reputation on the table. Make sure every sign up and web form is protected with email verification and bot filtering. Don't let fake or junk addresses poison your list. Never send to purchased, scraped or unverified lists. We've covered how slipping on list quality or letting bad data in will get your domain flagged fast. But even a clean list isn't enough if your sending habits change overnight. So what actually happens when you suddenly increase your volume, launch a new campaign, or bring in a different IP? We'll get to that in a second, but before we do, make sure to hit subscribe so you catch every deliverability fix when it drops. Be always one step ahead. Now, let's get into what really happens when your send volume jumps or when your team brings new IPs or systems online. ISPs and security gateways love stability. If your sending pattern jumps from 10k to 250k in a week or you start using new IPs without warning, you look suspicious, like a potential spammer. Campaigns will vanish at the worst moment, product launches will miss, sales pushes will fall flat, and business as usual emails like password resets will get delayed or silently filtered. It's easy to say, be more consistent. In reality, that's what you should do. If you need to send from a new IP or domain, make sure your ESP manages the rollout gradually, starting with your most engaged users, not the entire list at once. See if your ESP keeps transactional and marketing streams isolated using separate domains or IPs. Sure, your team can separate streams manually, but that's more work and leaves more room for error. At MailTrap, each stream is separated by design, so issues with marketing campaigns never impact your business critical transactional emails. Before any big campaign or seasonal search, coordinate with your ESP to review your expected send volumes and timing. Give them advance notice so they can adjust settings, spread out delivery, and help you avoid sudden spikes that could get you flagged by ISPs. After any major change or volume spike, rely on your ESP's monitoring to flag delays, bounces, or delivery issues. Good providers have this built in. But make sure your team is set up to receive those alerts and is ready to pause sending and investigate when something looks off. And even when you do everything right, your IP's reputation, yours or your neighbours, can still get flagged. With a dedicated IP, your reputation is all yours, but that also means you have to keep it warm. If you stop sending regularly or your volume drops too low, the IP goes cold. ISPs notice, and next time you try to send at scale, your emails look suspicious. With a shared IP, you benefit from a collective reputation and regular activity of all senders in the pool. This, however, means that if one sender in your pool makes a mistake, spam, bad list, block hist lit, you also feel the consequences. Your clean campaigns can end up in spam or blocked just because of someone else's screw up. Most businesses underestimate how fragile this balance is. How to make sure your IP works for you, not against you. If you use a dedicated IP, ask your ESP or email team 
how they're keeping it active and trusted year-round. Don't let it go cold. For shared IPs, request regular updates on pool health and transparency about who's sending alongside you. If your provider can't give clear answers, escalate or push for a better option. If you've ever had deliverability drop because of someone else's bad send on a shared IP, push your ESP for a clean pool or dedicated option. Make sure your team is set up real-time alerts using tools like Google Postmaster, SNDS or Talos so you're first to know when reputation changes. An IP is an asset. Treat it like one. Monitor it like one. And don't let it become your single point of failure. Even with perfect list hygiene and bulletproof infrastructure, your domain can still get tanked by a single block list, an overlooked feedback loop, or a security gateway's ever-evolving policy. The moment your bounce rate and complaints go up, or your domain appears on a block list, automated filters at mailbox providers start flagging your emails. And at that point, every additional email you send is basically self-sabotage. Revenue-critical sends get blocked, often with no error message you'll ever see. Delisting is slow, sometimes public, and during the downtime your sales and customer trust decline. But sometimes, it's not even your mistake. Your ESP's practices matter just as much. If they are slow to notify you about a block list event, don't offer detailed reputation dashboards, or don't help you isolate transactional versus marketing streams, your domain might suffer the consequences. MailTrap's infrastructure is designed to prevent flagging in the first place. Strict anti-spam and security policies keep risky senders out of your IP pool. Real-time monitoring catches issues before they spread, and you get instant alerts if anything needs your attention. To protect your business from block lists and sudden policy changes, make sure your team knows exactly who's responsible for pausing sends, investigating issues, and communicating decisions. Improvisation does not work well in the case of crisis. Insist on regular tests for your domains and IPs for block list and deliverability issues. There are plenty of tools out there, including MailTrap Sandbox, that let you safely simulate sends, spot deliverability problems early, and confirm you're not landing on any major block lists before real customers ever see an issue. Ensure any complaint or feedback loop data is monitored and acted on quickly not just when a problem escalates. Expect your ESP to provide real-time alerts for any block list hits or major filtering changes. If they can't, consider finding one that will. If your reputation suddenly drops, don't assume, don't hope, stop, investigate, and only then send again. And that concludes our look at why your email domains get flagged. The next step is our deliverability playlist, where you'll find everything you need to spot issues sooner, solve them faster, and make sure your emails reach the people and accounts that matter most. See you there.